that doesn't get you ready, what well, will? Steven Strasburg has finished warming up into his dugout. He goes. And Justin Verlander is set to go as well. Trey Turner first up. We'll give you the lineup when we get a moment here as Turner gets set to go. Three for 22 in this World Series. Going to be fun tonight, huh? Remember, Turner walked to lead off the ball game against Verlander in game two and started what was a two-run rally. Two-run double by Rendon. Ball on the strike. Well, you start in January. You put in all the work. You have an unbelievable year. You get to this point. You throw out the stats. This is how you want to end your baseball year if you're Justin Verlander. A win in your World Series champs and all that hard work and preparation is worth it. Here's a 1 1. If you're the Washington Nationals, you did the same thing, hoping that you would get an opportunity to play the ultimate game seven. This is the fourth time this postseason the Nationals have faced elimination. Left side, it's on play. Bare hand throw. Got him. What a play by Bregman to start the night, but that was close. And they may look at that again. I'll tell you what, he sure looks safe live, but what a play by Bregman is right. Well, Turner's not moving. He thinks he was safe. Yeah, he looks safe live. But look at his bare hand play. It's the only way he's got a chance. Turner can fly, and it looked like he beat it when it was live. We're going to get a chance to see if he did, and he did. That's going to be an infield leadoff hit for Trey Turner. And as we've talked about, when he hits... This Nationals lineup really seems to go, and they seem to win when he gets on base. Turner's shocked to be called out. It looks like that will be reversed, and it is. Base hit, and a good start for the Nationals. That replay review powered by Mitel, and it was quick as it should have been. And just like in game two, Gray Turner is on to start the night against Justin Verlander. Here's the lineup. Trey Turner, then Adam Eaton, then Anthony Rendon. In the middle, it's Soto, Kendrick, Cabrera. And the back end, Zimmerman, Robles, and Jan Gomes. Eaton takes a strength. Verlander's going to try and give his fastest delivery to home as he can. We all talked about game one and game two. Verlander and Cole, the one weakness is base runners being held on. Look for Turner at some point in this inning to go to second. Attempt to steal. Here's a bunt. Verlander gives way to the catcher and Chirinos got him. Eaton turns and goes back to the dugout. Got him by a step, maybe less. Great play by Torinos for out number one, and the sacrifice is successful. Oh, this is an absolute perfect buck. What a play by Torinos. The first two plays, so much pressure on the Houston Astros defense right out of the gate. Just beats him. By the way, Turner did an unbelievable job hitting the front of the bag. That's the fastest point to be in safe. Just one other note about Turner and him hitting and them going. They're 10 and 5. The Nationals are this postseason. In the wins, he's hit 302 and scored eight runs. 
hitting around 100 in the losses. He's on with an infield hit. He's at second with one out. And ball one misses down for Rendon. I understand bunting him over to second. I'm a little surprised they didn't give him a chance to steal step second and then bunt him over to third. But the early run for the Washington Nationals will be huge on the road again, of course, with the crowd going crazy. And with Strasburg on the mound. I really, I, you know, again, getting him to scoring position is, is going to be the big thing all night. The Washington Nationals were great the first two games on the road. Not so good at home in their three games. But one more pitch, I would have thought, giving him an opportunity to try and steal second. Eaton so good handling the bat. The Nationals were one for 21 with runners in scoring position in those three games back in D.C. And scored a total of three runs, outscored 19 to three. And you see the difference between games one and two here in Houston when they were seven for 21. Against the combination, by the way, of Cole and Verlander. Here's a one one. Strike two. The one thing that Verlander, I think, will do more of is throw more breaking balls than he normally would like to. He likes coming out and establishing the fastball. That first innings, the last couple have gotten him in trouble. He'll pitch this inning a little bit differently than he character, character, characteristically does over the year. Anthony Rendon. 126 RBIs to lead baseball in the regular season. That's blocked by Chirinos. Two and two. And for coverage of this game in Spanish, please tune to Fox Deportes. Rendon has been held in check for the most part. Two RBIs. He's four for 20, hitting 200. After a year in his walk year, a free agent to be, 319, 34 home runs, 126 driven in. In game one, he hit a changeup with two strikes, a double that knocked in both runs for the Nationals. I wouldn't expect Verlander to throw him a changeup after what he did. Rendon could put the Nationals on top. 2-2 pitch. There's the regular season on the left, the World Series on the right. Astros pitching has had the better of Rendon, but that two-run double in game two, huge. At some point, he's going to want to get the fastball up after three straight sliders. He'll try to get him to chase and elevate the eyes. Time called at the plate. Two two. Full count. With Juan Soto waiting on deck. And the Nationals strike first. One of the best breaking ball hitters. And he got another breaking ball. And this time he saw a wide open second base. Justin Verlander's been around for a long time. He was rookie of the year back in 2006. That was before we saw shift after shift after shift. I think when Verlander saw that ball leave the bat of Rendon, he's thinking, just conditioned to think that's a ground ball of the second baseman, and nobody was close to it. They haven't hit one ball hard. The exit velocity probably didn't register much, but they have one run. Here's Soto. He knows how to hit the ball hard, and he takes a pitch up for ball one. 
So more first inning damage against Justin Verlander. First inning runs allowed this postseason in his six starts, 10. Compared to 12 during the entire regular season as Soto hits it a mile into the air. And Brantley is there for out number two. And the batter with a runner at first, Rendon, and two out is Kendrick. The Nationals, because of the way they're built, actually benefit more than your typical National League team with the DH. They can have Kendrick hit. They get to play as Dribble Cabrera defensively at second base and Zimmerman at first base. That's their best defensive lineup. That's a strike. And Kendrick just knows how to mash the ball. Top average around baseball for the last three years combined. Infield hit by Turner. Eaton bunted him to second, and Rendon chopped one through a wide open right side for a one to nothing lead. And Kendrick, with the outfield playing him to hit the other way, waits for a 1 1. Jammed him. Into right, and a long run for Reddick. Instead, it's Altuve. But the Nationals got what they needed. They got their leadoff man on. Player resume sponsored by Indeed. Springer likes this round. The numbers are eye popping. 354 average, seven home runs. Slugging 896 in his World Series career. He was the MVP in 2017. He's hitting 316 this year. Two home runs in this World Series. 15 career postseason home runs. Game one, Strasburg. Fastball, fastball, slider, K. You wonder if Springer's thinking he's going to attack him here and try to tie the game up on a first swing homer. He loves the fastball. Strasburg's got a good one. That is ripped into the corner. Off the board. Springer with a loud start to game six. Well, you could just sense he was ready to hit. After getting the run, he's the one that makes it go for the Astros. Turner makes it go for the Nationals. He just missed getting it over that wall. And now Altuve guaranteed almost to make contact. Most all-time by leadoff hitter, the 13 extra base hits in his World Series career. That thing was... Well, it wasn't going over the wall. It was maybe going to go through it. Right. <laughs> it left at 112. That was the exit velocity. Here's El Tuve. Tying run at second. Nobody out. That gets away. Tying run at third. Nobody out. This was the slider, and this just handcuffs Gomes. And now a tough situation for the Nationals with nobody out. You really can't afford to play the infield in. You've got to give up the run to a ground ball and trust your offense.
Altuve is a career 367 hitter here at home during the postseason. In this World Series, nine for 25, and he's got 24 hits in the postseason in 2019. Well, Strasburg was a little rusty in game five and got into his groove and kept his team in it for them to rally to win that game in L.A. High fly ball to left. Soto back in front of the wall, tagging his Springer. Big arm, but it's not enough. Tied at one on a sack fly by El Tuve. A wild pitch and a sack fly hit to the back of the warning track and left for RBI number nine this postseason for El Tuve and his first in this World Series. Now Brantley strike one. Last 12 starts, including the postseason, six and one. ERA under two and a 1.34 career postseason ERA. But the lead is gone. Brantley takes down a ball and a strike. The Astros had a ton of foul balls against Strasburg in game one. 19 called strikes or thereabouts, and a lot of those, 12 of those came via the curveball. And he also threw Brantley a ton of changeups in his three at bat. 94 mile an hour pitch inside corner for strike two. Good pitch. And ideally, what you want to do when you face a team twice in relative five days, you try to show them early. You're not going to go with the formula that you got them out in that previous game, only to save that pitch for later in a crucial situation. Two and two. Strike three call. Two out. Yeah, this one's off the plate. And I guarantee you the next time Brantley comes up to the plate, he's going to let him know that that pitch cannot be a strike. But don't tell the Nationals about that. They were upset over a strike three call on Victor Robles. Back in D.C. in game five. The MVP chance are back for Alex Bregman. He's four for 22. Two of his four hits have left the park in this series. Including a grand slam back in D.C. That's down, ball one. Every once in a while... Steven Strasburg on that sinking fastball that you just saw will pull it and get underneath. If he doesn't get underneath it, it has late life and it's certainly an effective pitch. It's a timing mechanism with his elbow and getting the ball out of the hand and out of the glove a little quicker. One-0 -oh pitch. What you referenced earlier, John, in the opening, first overall pick by the Nationals in 2009, came up in 2010, struck out 14. Strasburg did in his big league debut, including his final seven batters. 
But by the end of the year, it undergone Tommy John surgery, made five starts in 2011, and the Nationals shut him down. As Bregman shuts it in the left. season for pitches like that and lately he has not been missing them struggled in the ALCS heated up in Washington wow and he carried his bat all the way down to first Gurriel hits one into left back at the wall To end the inning, and Soto may be injured. Up against the chain link part of the fence as Curiel gave it a ride. Let's take another look. Two to one. What a first inning here in game six. A run, then the Nationals, two to one. Second inning, and as Drupal Cabrera fouls it back, he tried to jump on that first pitch from Verlander. What an inning. RBI base hit by Rendon the other way for the first run, then a ringing double by Springer. Went to third on a wild pitch, scored on the sack fly by Altuve and Bregman. Road one up and out to make it two to one. Break two. And then Bregman, <laughs> it was gonna, you know, whether you give a congratulatory handshake, five to Don Kelly, or hand him the bat. You see many people carry the bat all the way to first base. But in the World Series game elimination, oh. one ball, two strikes. The tough spot for these pitchers tonight is they're so good with their fastballs and the hitters are not going to want to get deep. So they're going to be a little bit more aggressive tonight. And if you can get some quick outs with your fastball, boy, does that void well. But you're going to have to make good pitches to get fastball outs tonight. There's one. Strikeout number one for Verlander and one away here in the second. Four seam fastball straight over the top. Through Cabrera, a ton of curveballs in game one. All fastballs to start off game six. Here's Ryan Zimmerman. Four for 18 in this World Series takes a strike. And we talked to A.J. Hinch, the manager of the Astros, about Verlander. And the start tonight, he said, I'm not even going to talk to Justin about the first inning. It's been a problem this postseason. He said, I'm not putting that back in his head. He gave up one. He got two in support. A one pitch. Oh, outside. Yeah, you could add up the exit velocity in the first two or three balls in play, and it wouldn't have matched the one that Springer hit off the wall. But that's just the way the game goes sometimes, just where you hit it. Not how hard you hit it. Zimmerman flies one into left toward the bigger part of the park. Bradley has out number two. Chevrolet is the official vehicle of Major League Baseball and the brand to earn the most J.D. Power quality awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs over the last four years. Home plate umpire tonight is Sam Holbrook. Jim Wolf is at first. Doug Eddings at second. Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, at third. 
James Foy in left. Lance Barksdale in right. Alan Porter back in New York. In the replay room with two out, nobody on. Here is Victor Robles. High for ball one. Again, 2-0. Oh. Same spot. 2-1. and one. Fastball's got good life on it. Of course, he wants to keep it up there, which brings that curveball slider back into play. Fingers behind the ball gives the illusion that that ball is rising. All four pitches have been up and out of the strike zone. Two called for balls and the last two swung on and missed. Six-year-old brought his good stuff to the park tonight after one and a half. Two to one, Houston. Made display. StatCast AI is powered by AWS. And look at the exit velocity on these balls hit by this young lefty. Well, they needed him to get going. And he had that one click in Washington. That felt good, that homer. And now if you're Steven Strasburg, you cannot let... The Houston Astros in the first inning change the way you think about your fastball. You got to use it. It's a weapon that sets up your changeup and your curveball. And that's the big difference to me. With the Astros losing games one and two here, going to DC and kind of rediscovering their offense. This is a different Astros team than the one that left here down two games to nothing. Yeah, absolutely. A little shell shot. Hard hit, but right at Cabrera. Gathers it, throws it, run away. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. And by T-Mobile, its newest signal is more powerful, more reliable, and goes farther than ever, and it's built 5G ready. Rainy day in Houston, Texas today. It's supposed to be the same tomorrow. Under the roof. Here at Minute Maid Park with one out, nobody on. Here's Correa. Oh, that's down for ball one. This town is ready to celebrate. The Nationals trying to force a ball game tomorrow night. Good pitch for strike one. And that's the pitch that. Strasburg gets back on the count with more than any other pitch of his secondary stuff. It's the curveball. He did it 12 times in his first game against the Astros. It's a third. Rendon charges to get the high high. And gets the out. We are uh, more than halfway through the order, but we're going to give you the Houston Astros lineup. George Springer, he's already doubled and scored. Altuve has a sack fly. Brantley's 0 for 1. In the middle, Alex Bregman is homered. Yuli Gurriel sent Soto to the wall, and Jordan Alvarez is grounded out. Carlos Correa did the same. Robinson Chirinos is digging in, and Josh Reddick wondering if they'll bat here in the second or leading off the third. Torinos, four out of 11. 
He's kind of found his stroke here in the World Series. Had only two hits in the postseason coming into this round, and that's outside for ball one. Loves hit the fastball. And you see the two homers. Strasburg, if he gets in the two strike count, had taken care of him with change ups and curveballs. One 0 pitch. Left side. Turner. Gets the out. Three ground ball out. Sends game number six into inning number three. With the Astros on top by one. Instagram and YouTube for every baseball moment. Third inning rolls in. Justin Verlander rolls back out there and in steps Jan Gomes, the number nine hitter, then Trey Turner, then Adam Eaton. Joining us on a headset down in the dugout is the manager of the Houston Astros, A.J. Hinch. Looks like Torinos might have been crossed up there. And uh, that's strike number one. Hello there, A.J. <laughs> You know, they just talked about what the first pitch of the inning was going to be like, so that uh, that's a rarity. <laughs> he was crossed I know, I up, right? about that one. Yeah, yeah, it looked like it. It looked like it. sometimes you can cross yourself up as a catcher, so I maybe yeah. maybe he's already thinking about the second pitch. Well, we'll see what that is here. The count 0 and 1. Gomes 2 for 8 in this World Series. Ground ball left side. Altuve with the longer throw than usual, and this time he's perfect. What do you see from Verlander? Well, I see him settling in a little bit, which, you know, with all the talk of the first inning and then he gets a soft contact against Turner and then and then Rendon just shows why he's one of the best hitters in the game and and beats the shift and he gives up a run. But he settled. He settled in. I thought the second inning was was very critical for him. And he was relying pretty. He's trying to find the slider, which um, he threw a ton of them to, to Rendon. And, and then he got a couple of pop ups on some fastballs. So I just I've watched this guy over the last couple of years just settle in and get stronger and stronger and I hope I hope that's the case today. Trey Turner at the plate. Part of that soft contact in the first inning, but he beat the throw at first. When this guy gets on, he really starts trouble for them, doesn't he? Yeah, I think it bothers the, the JV, I think it bothers Robbie, I think it bothers me too. So I none of us like to have have him on the base and uh, an exciting player, obviously. And the more we can control him, the more it helps our innings. 1 0 pitch is flied in the air to center. Springer says he has it. Here's the last question I have for you. With all the talk of Altuve, he's been unbelievable. Your, your cleanup hitter just went deep. There's something about Springer starting your lineup and he started it with a bang tonight and in the World Series he just likes a big stage. Yes he does and I like him on the big stage especially when he kicks things off for us when never put too much pressure on any one of your guys one of the beauties of our team is we can spread it around and any one guy can hurt you but we're usually pretty good when George is pretty good and that you know tonight was, was important after we gave up the run for him to hit a bullet get to second hustle play to third and then score on a sack fly kind of kind of re-energized our, our dugout in the right way. Two out, nobody on. It's only been four pitches this inning, AJ. I know it. This is a very important pitch for you and me both. Is this, is this going to be our goodbye? <laughs> I hope so. I hope it's a, a pop up the center. George can catch this one too. Have you ever wanted to take a headset off more than you do right now? <laughs> I just want the third out. Strike one. Thanks, AJ. All right. Go back, to, go back to work. Take care. All right. Eaton dropped down a sacrifice bunt his first time. Took a strike. And now a ball. Verlander's getting the fastball at the upper tier of the strike zone, which is what he wants because he keeps that curveball for when he needs it. Two. So in other words, fastball slider is going to be his emphasis on one getting that pitch somewhere close to the strike zone. But then when he needs a strike or he needs to slow the hitter down, it feels like he's on his fastball. He's going to throw that big curveball, and that's going to just get them out in front. And usually, it's an out.
Rendon on deck. He has the RBI for Washington. As he smartly sent one through the open right side of the infield, his first time up to score Turner. Here's a one two. Is that his best? He can make the pitcher throw eight to ten pitches and frustrate him, fouling off a lot of them. Two two pitch from Verlander. Just missed up and away a full count. That's a two out walk to Adam Eaton. Verlander had retired seven in a row and now issues his first walk in the night and brings in the threat that is Anthony Rendon. He has 10 RBIs this postseason. First pitch to him the first time they faced each other was a fastball. Then he went to work on two of those at bats with sliders. You saw that again in tonight's game. That was pretty close. That's about Verlander's best move. Trying to catch Eaton, and Eaton got back to the bag. So if you're Rendon, do you go up and you see this pickoff move? When you're Rendon, do you go up there thinking fastball aggressive and do damage on the first pitch, especially with Eaton on? Verlander's going to want to get ahead of the count. And they vacate the right side of the infield again. Rendon took a slider the other way for the RBI hit back in the first. There's a fastball and this is up and in. Because even if Eaton doesn't go, he wants to make Verlander believe that he's going to go at any time. Which therefore messes up the timing towards a great hitter in Rendon. The more Verlander has to worry about Eaton, the better it is for the batter at the plate. Tom Verducci. Yeah, you saw Justin Verlander shake his head on that opposite field hit by Anthony Rendon. I was as well because the defense played him to pole, even though Verlander threw him seven consecutive breaking balls. The slider designed to be down and away, and Rendon said, I'll take what you're giving me with the runner in scoring position. That to me was like playing run defense on third and long. Good hitter up, runner in scoring position, sliders away. Anthony Rendon just too good not to take advantage of the opportunity. Two pretty good moves that Adam Eaton has seen, able to get back. Eaton has not attempted a steal this postseason. That's strike two on Rendon. So now the element of steal comes in a little bit more with two strikes. If you're Dave Martinez, you want to get Rendon the opportunity to hit and not have a runner get thrown out. But now with two strikes, he knows the strike zone. This is the time, I think, if you're going to steal a base, you could do it with two strikes. Two and two.
you're a base runner, you're trying to figure out the timing of the pitcher. He hasn't held the baseball. His timings are 1,001, 1,002, and when he throws over, it's usually quick. As a pitcher, if you're thinking about changing things up, you want to get a little bit of a hold as long as you can, then throw over just to show them you're not going as soon as you come back to stretch in less than two seconds. Eden stole 15 during the regular season. Two two. Fouled out of play. The Nationals stole 116 as a team. That was number three in the major leagues. Their top two guys had 50 between them. Turner and Eaton. Still two and two. These Nationals on the morning of May 24th, they woke up 12 games under 500 at 19 and 31. And since that day, these two teams have the exact record at 84 and 43. the count goes full to three and two and that will allow Eaton a chance to get a head start over at first on deck is Juan Soto Be the ninth pitch to Rendon. Got the first two hitters out in a total of four pitches, but Eaton drew a walk. And Rendon is making Verlander work. Runner goes. Another foul. Three great conference matchups coming away Saturday on Fox. It all kicks off with big noon Saturday as Nebraska takes on Purdue, then a double dose to the Pac-12. Washington battles number nine Utah, followed by seventh ranked Oregon squaring off with USC. All on Fox and the Fox Sports Pack. So the toughest read for a pitcher and a catcher is he just missing your fastball or are you beating him and that's why he's fouling it off. If you're beating him, you stay with the fastball. He walked him. Back to back walks, and now Juan Soto walks to the plate, and he could do big damage here for Washington. That didn't miss by a lot. Didn't miss by a lot. A tremendous discipline for a guy who fouled off the pitcher's pitches and took a nasty one. The interesting pitch selection here, too, because he has started off Soto in his previous three at bats in the first matchup with fastballs. The 21 year old. Two home runs in this World Series. Opportunity for the Nationals, and that's out of play. 95. From Verlander.
You know one. Oh. They've done a nice job against this team. We talked about the two out success that the Nationals had coming into this World Series. It was phenomenal. And you knew at some point it had to maybe not stay at that rate. But that one for 21, a little credit given to the Astros making some adjustments. 1-1 one, one pitch. Drops in for strike two. Not all pitches are created equally, even in the early innings. These are stress deliveries for Justin Verlander. Yes, they are. Now the young man will, uh, Soto will spread out. Try to shorten the strike zone with no stride. And if he's vulnerable anywhere, it's fastball up and away when he gets to two strikes like this. Altuve. Inning is over. Back to back walks with two down. Verlander gets around him after two and a half in game six. Two to one, Houston. At the table, there'll be time enough to count. When the deal is done, you got no sense to hold. This pitching matchup rolls into the bottom of the third inning. Verlander and Strasburg. Now it's Strasburg against the 9 1 and 2 hitters. Two runs in the first for Houston. Double by Springer, sack fly by Altuve, and a home run by Bregman. Reddick takes the strike. Soto just grounded out with two on and two out in the top of this third inning. Games one and two combined. The Nationals scored nine runs with two outs. None over the last three plus games. Oh, that's inside. Pretty good pitch. Strasburg doesn't get it. One ball, one strike. Real good pitch. And his two seam fastball, which you see the velocity, has such incredible movement. Not to mention how much movement his changeup has. Strike two on Reddick. And with two strikes, Rendon moves even farther to his left. Pitch him away. Two and two. Now, when you see that change up from Strasburg, he's just getting out in front. He's like almost pushing it. When it's good, he's throwing it from the same release point of the fastball, and the ball just absolutely fades away over the middle of the plate. Has great movement, and the hitters can't lay off of it. Strasburg's ability to throw strikes with four pitches is uncanny. It's what makes him special. You know, he's canned the delivery a long time ago. He just pitches out of the stretch. And he can throw his curveball anytime he wants for a strike. Doesn't throw quite as many sliders anymore. And of course, fastball chains up. Two two. Good pitch down and in. Reddick strikes out on the changeup. That's the second strike out of the night for Strasburg. This is what I'm talking about, how nasty it is. That's the movement, and you can't just pick it up if you're a hitter. This pitch right here starts over the plate, but you would say at home, why is he swinging at that? It never even came close. But out of his hand, it sure looks like it is. That'll bring in Springer. Who teed off. Back in the first inning and rocketed a ball off the scoreboard and left. <laughs> Strasburg comes right after him with a fastball. 
But these numbers in the World Series for Springer. Seven home runs from the leadoff spot. That's the most in World Series history. Earlier in this series, homered for his fifth straight game in a World Series. He was the MVP in 2017. The seven World Series home runs. The only guy with more is Reggie Jackson with eight since divisional play started back in 1969. That's a strike. One and two. See, for most people, about 15 years ago, that would be considered a good two seam fastball. That's his changeup. Throws it off the last three fingers. Of his hand and making sure that you know when you go in your glove you don't show any deviation in the glove anything that the hitter knows you're changing the grip or giving away a pitch. That's why he'll make that little movement right there. Oh no. Held up somehow. Two and two. Let's see from this camera. The change up grip. This at bat. I wonder if he'll go to the 3 2 change up. And trust that Springer will be aggressive. Left side, Rendon throws to get him. Two out in the inning. Great fastball away. Probably the best fastball of the night so far for Strasburg. And with two down and the bases empty, Altuve will step to the plate. And that sack fly, his first RBI in this World Series. His ninth of the postseason to go along with his five home runs. And there's 353 average. Strike one. Hard to argue with the success that Altuve has. If there's one thing that I'm sure the Astros would love for him to do, but it, it, it might take away his greatness. Be a little more selective. Swings a lot of pitches out of the zone. But he, get, he gets a lot of hits. Almost clipped him. The 24 hits that Altuve has this postseason, just two off the record. Belongs to Pablo Sandoval from back in 2014. 26 hits that postseason for the former San Francisco Giant. That's behind the second base bag. Cabrera. And a one, two, three. Third inning for Strasburg. Fourth now. Get glad you're with us tonight. Game six. Astros up three games to two. The road team has won each of the first five games of this World Series. This is the 115th World Series, and that's only happened now three times.
already the Nationals have 14 foul balls against Justin Verlander. So you see the pitch count of 58. But majority of those have been the foul ball version. Coming off a third inning where he threw 25 pitches. Kendrick popped up his first time and now oh, takes it outside. Ball one. Top three in the order, not required to sit together in the dugout, but just choosing to do so. One two pitch. That's in the left center field, a base hit. Brandley over to cut it off, and Kendrick is on to start this fourth inning. It'll bring in Cabrera. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Chevy. Chevy has earned JD Power quality awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs. Tonight's aerial coverage is brought to you by State Farm. Third hit of the night for the Nationals. They got two in the first that produced a run. They put their leadoff man on for the second time tonight. Cabrera needs to find a way to not get to two strikes. Because Verlander has had his number in the last four at bats. Fastball misses up, ball one. What's your gut right now? For a guy who's in the Hall of Fame for pitching, what are we seeing between these two, Verlander and Strasburg? Are they both at their best? Yeah, they're settling in. The first inning was a little bit weird in the fact that, you know, soft contact and then a jump on the first ball kind of shocked the system to Strasburg. And I think ultimately, when you get into this spot, all you want to be able to do is you don't want to pitch defensive you want to be on attack and you got to make certain adjustments if the if the offense is treating you differently like the first thing your radar tells you is are they all swinging at the first pitch are they trying to get to my fastball and then you read accordingly after that and so far Verlander as we mentioned the, the foul balls he's been trying to get that fastball at the top of the zone and missing them just a little bit that's foul Justin Verlander is on a list he wants no part of. The ERA is big. He went 0 and 3 with Detroit between 2006 and 2012 in series against the Cardinals and the Giants. 0 and 1 against the Dodgers two years ago, but a team win. 0 and 1 already this year against the Nationals, and this one is. On the infield and foul for Chirinos. One on, one out. Ken Rosenthal way in on what we've seen in the World Series from Verlander in his career. And so we all know the narratives, but narratives often do not tell the entire story. And in Verlander's case, that 0-5 record is an example of how win-loss records do not always adequately reflect a pitcher's performance. Yes, Verlander has had some clunkers. Game one in 2006, game one in 2012. But three of his six World Series starts have been quality starts, and in Game 2, he didn't miss by much. So, if you go back to 2017, that World Series against the Dodgers, he actually pitched quite well, but in each of those games, the Astros scored only one run while he was on the mound. So, John, what do you think? Is this fair or not? Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely fair to... You're the product sometimes, but... Your team not scoring and one bad pitch, and it's just the way it goes when you get to this time of the year. But when you take the body of work, man, you I guarantee you Houston is glad he's on the mound. Well, like you said, when they got him in August of 2017, it changed the entire feel of the organization, not just the big league team. Here's a foul tip for two quick strikes on Ryan Zimmerman. There's the line in game six back in 2017, a series that was won in seven games by Houston.
big number six innings nine strikeouts. He's done everything rookie of the year Cy Young MVP world champion three no hitters but he has not won in a World Series start. Ball one, one and two now on Zimmerman with Victor Robles on deck. Yeah, the first start here, he had uh, two runs in before he re retired an out. And he pitched a gem all the way up until Suzuki's home run in the latter part of the game. So you think about that game and the bullpen let that game get away for the Astros. Moreno's a good block. The checklist is there, and it's pretty much unlike anybody else's. Rookie of the Year, Cy Young Award, MVP. Those two came in 2011. No hitter. He had his third this year. He's 120. Struck out 300. Did that this year at the age of 36. He's been a world champion. Was the MVP of the 2017 ALCS. That rotation leader for the Astros, despite not getting a win in the World Series, the guys since he's come to Houston, and obviously before that, but his numbers with Houston are phenomenal. They sure are. But you and I know Verlander well enough to know that that 0 and 5 bugs him. 2 2 rides up and in. It was 0 and 2, and now it's 3 and 2. Zimmerman, a home run. In this series, back in game one, has two RBIs, and that 3 2 pitch fouled off to the right. Zimmerman got a little in between there, and a fastball he just had to foul off. He's probably looking for something middle, middle in, and maybe spinning. is outside and it's two on with one out here in the fourth inning for the Nationals as they continue to work these at bat 71 pitches Verlander has only one out in the fourth yeah that is very uncharacteristic of Verlander 0 and 2 and then he ends up walking him he got two swings and misses at the top of the zone and went slider slider and then fastball Fastball and wasn't able to put away Zimmerman. 14 walks now this postseason for Verlander. Victor Robles, 22 years old, takes a slider for strike one. Robles, when you stand next to him, he's bigger than you think. He is a strong 22 year old. Who popped 17 home runs during the regular season? Strike two. Still a young guy had that reaction after being called out on strikes in the seventh inning of game five on a pitch that looked to everyone, especially Robles, like it was outside. Lost his temper. Talked to his manager, Davey Martinez, afterward and apologized for losing his cool. Oh, two. He went around, and that strikeout is out number two. And the batter will be Jan Gomes with 
A runner at first, Zimmerman two out after this check swing. He kept walking that pitch further and further away after Robles showed the inability to recognize the spin. Victor Robles, who grew up in the Dominican Republic and wanted to play basketball. But chase the baseball dream. The runners at first and second and two down. The batter will be Gomes. A hit and a walk in the inning. That's it down the line into the corner, hooking and caught to end the inning. Brantley got there and before it crossed the white line, it's ruled a fair ball. For the Astros, most importantly, it's out number three, bottom of the fourth inning. Houston bats up one. Out looking on a pitch he thought was outside. Back in the first inning, then Bregman, who is homered, and Yuli Gurriel against Strasburg. Strike one. Talking about Strasburg earlier when Bregman homered in the middle of my beautiful story about how they shut him down back in 2012. It's over a year removed from Tommy John surgery. And here they are in 2019, Strasburg on the mound. Contract questions after this World Series, though. Is that breaking right. balls a strike? He can opt out of his deal. Has a 72 hour window to decide whether he wants to opt out of the last four years, $100 million. Mike Rizzo sweating through this one in the seat. No balls, two strikes on Brantley. To the right side for Zimmerman to the bag, one down. Here comes Bregman, StatCast AI is powered by AWS. Launch. For a two to one lead. It left at just under 95 miles per hour at 35 degrees and traveled 355. Plenty of distance with the Crawford boxes and left. Statcast error is the longest distance anyone's ever had the bat in his hand before he let it go. That, that caught your attention. I, I noticed that. <laughs> as, uh, the guy who was known as a fierce competitor on the mound. I saw you take note of Bregman taking his bat all the way down to first on a no doubt home run to left. <laughs> Breaking ball for a strike. One ball, one strike. When he homered back in the first inning, Alex became the second player. With two first inning home runs in a single World Series since Mickey Hatcher. Uh, he's locked in, I can tell you. The grand slam that he hit in Washington, and now the homer here. <laughs> On the infield, Zimmerman says he has it. He was trying to hand this bat off to his first base coach, and I'm sure the first base coach was like, I've never had this happen to me. Okay, drop it. He's going to drop it. Nope. Nope. He's going to. That was Altuve's reaction. Two out bases empty for Yuli Gurriel. Ball one in the dirt. Mickey Hatcher, when he went deep twice in the first inning in a World Series, that was back in 88 when the Dodgers beat the A's. To say Kirk Gibson, and for those old enough to remember, you know exactly which series that was. 
And the last time the Dodgers won it all. And these young guys are tired of hearing about 1988 on the Dodgers roster. Two and the count, Guriel fly to the wall in left. His first time since Soto back up against that chain link fence. Two up. It's a good job by Strasburg right there. You know, you watch the video and you go back, you see the numbers, and I'm sure the numbers have been given to the Astros on a 2 0 count. How many times he went to a curveball to get back in the count, and then he just poured a fastball in right there. Now you can pitch him backwards. Yep. But the count goes to 3 and 1. The slugging DH Jordan Alvarez on deck. Two out walk and the first walk handed out by Strasburg here in game six. Here comes Alvarez. If you haven't had a chance to catch Friday Night Smackdown on Fox yet, now is your chance to see what all the buzz is about. It's the live primetime spectacle that has millions of viewers on their feet every Friday night. The new era of Friday Night Smackdown is only on Fox. I've heard the left-handed swing of Rodon Alvarez in the media dining room compared to a young Willie McCovey, to a young Carlos Delgado. Yeah, I like that. Oh, that's that was start. actually Steve Horn, our editorial consultant, came up with Delgado. Yeah, that's a, that's a great comp, mainly because it's closer to what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Delgado, Delgado in the bat, batter's box, and he was, ooh. Maybe it's the 44 that has people thinking McCovey. Whoever you want to compare him to, this kid can hit. 22 years old, born in Cuba. Likely rookie of the year in the American League, and the Astros could very well sweep all the major awards in the American League. With Cy Young, it will be either Verlander or Cole. MVP could very well be Bregman. Rookie of the year could be this guy. And should be. 2 0 the count. Uncharacteristically, again. Not many walks out of Strasburg, and he's overthrown the breaking ball just a little bit. Pulled the last couple, trying to make that perfect pitch. And in these situations, when the count's not in your favor and a guy can do damage at the plate, you just move it on and face the next guy. You do not give in. That is back-to-back -back walks from Strasburg, and he had a total of two this entire postseason coming in. And now with two on, there are two out for Carlos Correa. And again, just going back and looking at the at-bats, he challenged Correa a lot on the first pitch with fastballs. To be the highest pitch count of any of his first four innings. Correa hit a two run shot in the fourth inning in game five two nights ago. He's got two on here, two out. Astros up one, and that's oh, inside.
One strike out of his last 10 pitches. You can just see the batter staring out there, trying to figure out what's coming. What do I look for? All of a sudden, Strasburg has hit a little wild streak here. Yeah, the curveball, the breaking ball. He's trying to be a little bit too fine with it, maybe spinning it a little firmer, and he's pulling it away, trying to keep it out of the middle of the pl middle of the plate. Down two to one. It's hard not to think about pitching perfect, but all you have to do now is try to make a pitch down in the zone, even if you think Correa is swinging. He was swinging all right. Almost came out of his shoes, two and one. That looked like the four seam fastball instead of the two seam fastball. In for strike two. And that's the pitch. That pitch down, sinking action, the bottom of the zone. There's the two seamer, and that is just really, really tough when you're expecting something else, especially looking middle to middle up. Struck him out on a pitch down and away, and that's strikeout number three for Strasburg, and that's four innings in the books for game six. We're in Houston, Astros up. Three games to two and leading. Two to one back after this from your local five. New inning, we are into the fifth. Verlander. Deals a strike to Trey Turner. Turner, Eaton, Rendon, top of the order. That's oh. into right, foul ball. Can Reddick get there or Guriel? Boy, Guriel has played the heck out of first base. Not easy. One down. He had to go a long way. Authentic on-field caps, tees, jerseys, hoodies, and more. Get all your Astros and Nationals World Series gear and celebrate with your team at the official source, MLBShop.com. Maybe you can put together a last-minute Halloween costume. Good. Still got time. How many days away? There you go. Kind of frightening. With one out. How many days away? It's uh, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. I'll be ready. <laughs> he takes the strike. That's a big out. Getting Turner out. We've seen him when he got it, gets on the bases. Washington usually scores. That's down the line. It is gone. Way out of here to tie this game at two. Adam Eaton. With his second home run of this World Series. And it's a 2-2 game here in the fifth. I thought I heard a, another sound after the ball hit the bat. And it was the backswing hitting Torino's. See, he goes in there to try and get this curveball. Watch the follow through. Catches him on the mask. Knocks him back a little bit, but at this point, he's locked in on where that ball is going. And this is a new ball game. 2 2, one out. Nobody on, and Rendon fouls one right side that will get out of place. Strike one. Boy, Adam Eaton came in hitting 316 in this World Series. 
He's now seven for 20. He's dropped down a sacrifice bunt. He's drawn a walk, and now he's homered to tie the game. The Nationals have this fearless approach, and obviously been there, done that four different times, as you mentioned, facing elimination. Rendon pops it up foul. Torinos is out of room. Let's go back to the home run by Eaton. Three. This slider right here came out of the side of, side of Verlander's hand. See how it did not have the late breakdown? Two vets, Eaton and Kendrick, celebrate at the end of the bench. Two car enthusiasts. That's their celebration. 0 2. Ball one. Adam Eaton came up with Arizona in 2012. He's been with the White Sox his third year with the Nationals. No bigger swing in his career than that one that we just witnessed here in the fifth. 2 2 game, 1 2 pitch. Rendon pops it up. Rennick takes care of out number two. Tom? Yeah, you mentioned it, Joe. Two car enthusiasts there Kendrick and Eaton. Adam told me his dad was a drag racer and he grew up working on his pit crew from the time he was as young as seven years old. His love of cars obviously goes way back. Yeah, I'll say. Well, he was able to motor around the bases as he did back in game two when he hit a home run to right. Just about the same spot and then was on a dead sprint. And almost caught Victor Robles who was on base in front of him. Here's Soto and that's ball one up and away. 1-0 for two. Verlander got him on a ground out with two on two out to end the top of the third his last time Soto takes ball two Ball hit the roof and drops untouched. Strike one. This is what Soto does early in the count. And then with two strikes, he takes it from a turn position to a stretched out position, widens his stance, uses more of his hands. Very unique young player. Understands. Where and when to generate power and where and when to not expand the strike zone. Ball is in sight. A little bit up and in, and the count moves to three balls and a strike. Thirty-four regular season home runs. For the now 21 year old Juan Soto. That is hit in the air to right and way out of here. Wow. And now Soto carries his bat down to the first base coach Tim Bogar. And Juan Soto has just gone deep and the Nationals take the lead 3 2 in the fifth. It left his bat at 111 miles per hour. And in a little payback for Bregman, he carries his bat down to first. Wow. Yeah, and I don't think Tim Bogar was real happy with this at all. But nonetheless, he's taken a lead on a mammoth home run on a 3-1 fastball. Oh. Two home runs in this inning and now 44 home runs 
all in against Verlander for the season, regular season and postseason combined. Kendrick, one ball, one strike. I'm still blown away by the power that that young man has and the recognition of a pitch prior that he saw for a ball. And then he unloaded. One one pitch is down and away. Two balls and a strike. And this crowd packed into Minute Maid Park is stunned. Two and two. Kendrick waits. Flies it into right. Back into the corner. It's Reddick. To end the inning, a foul ball. But second lead of the night for the Nationals. They led one to nothing after a half. Down two to one into this fifth. Home run by Eaton and this mammoth blast by Soto. Three two. Nationals on top. Runs in a World Series. Breaking ball from Strasburg in for strike one on Chirinos. He's also the first to have a home run at two different ages in the same World Series. Hit one at 20 and gets a couple more at the age of 21. Chirinos grounded out. His first time now takes a ball. I will say this the Nationals are not intimidated and that young man's not intimidated Some people might read his antics in the box a little differently But he wants to own the box and he wants to let the pitcher know That he's not intimidated and he has been showing out all year in a way we got to talk to him and Amazing young man of talent 21 off the end of the bat, strike two on Chirinos. Give you a summary here as we play in the bottom of the fifth inning of game six of this World Series with the Astros up three games to two, but the Nationals now lead on the strength of back. Rather two home runs in the top of this inning, one by Eaton and then a two-run shot by Soto. In the middle, Rendon flied out to right. Bregman went deep for the Astros. Gave them a two to one lead back in the first, and that one's inside. Two and two. Number nine man, Josh Reddick on deck. Think about the two home runs that Juan Soto has hit here in Houston in this World Series. Took Garrett Cole up onto the train tracks and left in game one and just took Justin Verlander into the second deck in right. Yeah. Uh, I'm still shaking my head. I mean, it's impressive. 2-2 two -two here. Foul back. He just made this ballpark look so small. A strikeout from Strasburg. Four on the night. 
And one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning, back in game one. 20 years old against Garrett Cole. Up near the train. Took Garrett Cole's power and used it to his advantage the opposite way. He took a 3-1 count and took it to his advantage to 413 feet. This is the most recent moonshot. And the alert brought to you by YouTube TV. History happens live. 417 was the first ball to left the other way and 413 into right. Reddick strike one. Well, the Astros have had a lot of success at home in the first innings and then kind of settle in and don't really generate much. They're going to have to find a way to get right back with runners in scoring position and get a way to tie this game or take the lead. It's been early success. Thirteen first inning runs at home in the postseason, including tonight. Oh no. Reddick shows bunt takes the ball. One ball, one strike. Brad Peacock was up in the top of this fifth, and he's up again here in the bottom of the fifth. One one to run. Fooled him. A great change up in the count one and two. It's just such a good pitch. I mean, it is the movement on that pitch when he stays behind it and doesn't get his elbow below the ball. See that just turn over and disappear. Hit for Reddick with one out. Golden opportunity here for the Astros now with their World Series star George Springer digging in. One on, one out. Once again, I just got to say, these two crowds have been unreal in Washington and in Houston. In the game, every single moment, standing up loud. Springer takes a strike. That hit by Reddick. A moment ago was the Astros' first hit since the first inning. When Bregman homered with two out. A one. Handled by Gomes. Side corner for strike two. Two great pitch on a guy that wants to get extended over the middle of the plate and use his power. And now that brings in the change up down and in if he wants to throw it on that plane. When you've got him conscious in with the fastball, he's been missing the springer away with the breaking ball. Just got a piece. Uh, went to the changeup, but it was up. That changeup needs to be down. Starts of the, the, the square you're seeing there on your screen. In that right corner. Oh. 
type of changeup that Strasburg throws is easier on the eyes against a left-hander because he's got it fading away from a left-hander. You have to have a different sight and a different thought process against right-handers. And you've got to almost pretend that the guy's not in the box as a right-hander because you want it down and away as if a left-hander was in there. So down and in to a right-hander is the spot. Two and two. Second of the game for Springer. See how he gets on the side of that ball and it rolls. Great job by Springer hanging in there and just flipping it right around Rendon. And then the ball gets stuck just for a second underneath. Reddick had to make sure it got by Rendon before he could fully commit. Gary Pettis, one of the most aggressive third base coaches, held Reddick wisely with Altuve digging in. You've got the right man at the plate if you're Houston. The key to playoff baseball, besides the homers, is scoring runs without the benefit of a hit sometimes. Putting it in play to the shortstop. Guaranteed run to the second baseman. Run. Just don't hit it to the corner. Strike one. Altuve with a sack fly. His first time up popped up his next time. Great. First pitch change up. Strike two. All right, this is where Gomes is going to have to be really good because this pitch should be nowhere near the strike zone. See Corbin getting loose. We talked about Altuve expanding the zone, and even at his short arm, short high, he finds a way to get to the ball away off the plate. Got to get him out down on the plate. Something down that bounces. Can Altuve deliver again for his Astros? He strikes out on a pitch in the dirt. And there it was. That's the only area, because he's vulnerable down, that is the pitch Strasburg needed to make. It bounced on the plate. Gomes did a perfect job. It's nowhere close to the strike zone. What an excellent pitch under the circumstances of a guy that normally puts the ball in play. Wow. And now the dangerous Michael Brantley steps in. 0 for 2 in this game. Came in hitting 400 in this World Series. Nobody in this Astro lineup has hit the ball better than Brantley. 
Oh, that's outside. In this World Series, every game he's had good swing after good swing as he takes ball one. Which he has. Very stoic Strasburg so far being and looking like he's in control. You know, every once in a while talk to himself. But I would expect some emotion if he's able to get out of this inning without giving up a run. One ball, one strike. Strasburg takes a moment behind the mound, kicks the mud out of his spikes, and now climbs back up top. Brantley could put Houston back on top with a base hit. Hard hit. Nice pit by Turner. Getting over. And the defense was aligned perfectly with Brantley at the plate. And with Trey Turner on the other side of the bag, he makes that short hop pickup, gets the out. 3-2 Nationals. After five in game six. Out and struck out. Brantley hit the ball right on the nose, but right at Turner up the middle. Oh. And the Astros have left four now, and Justin Verlander's out of the ball game after 93 pitches. Here's Brent Peacock. Fifth game this postseason. Oh, that's it. That's inside 2-0. Oh. Well, part of the foul balls and just the tracking and the two homers may have led to that decision of not forcing another inning at 93. AJ is going to give him a different look, a different angle. The Nationals had done a great job against Verlander spoiling pitches. And then getting to the pitches they could do damage with. So the Nationals trying to avoid elimination here tonight force a game seven tomorrow night and they have knocked out Justin Verlander after five Cabrera Zimmerman Robles Washington up three two Guriel to the bag one away That'll bring in Zimmerman. MLB's RBI program is designed to provide youth in underserved communities opportunities to play baseball and softball. For more information, visit MLB.com slash RBI. Zimmerman drew a walk his last time up, fly to left, back in the second. Ball one inside. Peacock's going to have to be careful with that sinking fastball coming back over the middle of the plate with Zimmerman. That's why he's trying to spin the ball away. Zimmerman, a good low ball hitter with power. Franchise leader in home runs and RBIs. Breaking right. ball in for a strike. He told us after game one, this ballpark plays big, especially to center. Which is where he took Garrett Cole out back in game one. Here's a 1 1. Strike two. The numbers for Verlander five innings, three runs on five hits, three walks. Three strikeouts, two home runs. And the three strikeouts are a little bit of a tell of the stuff that Verlander had at times, but wasn't able to put guys away. Credit the Nationals and that man. That's a tailing fastball for strike three, two down. Painted it away. And Zimmerman didn't think so. This is 
Hands on the outside corner coming back over the plate. Great pitch. Here's Robles with two down. That's a foul ball for strike one. You know, Peacock back in 2017 pitched really well for A.J. Hinch out of the bullpen in the postseason, especially in the World Series. Had a three and two-thirds inning save with no hits, a walk, and four strikeouts in game three of the World Series here against the Dodgers. To put Houston up two games to one. But that pitch turns the corner. He's tough because then he's got a tailing fastball coming in and a slider going away. Every once in a while he cross fires that and spins it over the plate. And it doesn't quite have the break. Here's the 0-2 to Robles. Peacock also worked two scoreless innings in game seven. The World Series win at Dodger Stadium in that 5-1 to one final. He's been on the big stage before, and he's trying to pitch a scoreless sixth. And who knows how many after that. That's outside. Two and two. Bregman, Guriel, and Jordan Alvarez will bet in the bottom of this sixth. Scoreless inning put up by Brad Peacock. Alex Brinkman has homered in this game, and he'll lead it off in the bottom of the sixth. Alex Brinkman has taken Steven Strasburg deep twice in this World Series. In the first inning, back in game two. In the first inning tonight, here in game six. Ten career postseason home runs. Ball one just down and away. Bregman, Guriel, Jordan Alvarez in a 3-2 game. Nationals on top. And World Series with the Astros on top. Patrick Corbin has been up in the bullpen. He's now taking a break, but he seems to be ready if needed. And Max Scherzer is lurking down there in the bullpen. Checking out the lineup card. 2-0. Chop to short, tough play. Turner. He to start the inning. Turner playing deep and Bregman laid it out for an infield hit. As soon as he hits this ball, he takes off knowing it's going to be a very tough play for Turner. Turner did his best. He came in and fired it to first, but Bregman beat it out.
Here's Curiel. Might be two. Turner. Cabrera. Safe. One on, one out. Turner didn't get rid of it right away. Remember, he's playing with a break at the base of his right index finger, and the little, the little extra moment may have cost the Nationals a double play. Yeah, and a great job, though, by Guriel. Just absolutely going as fast as he can to first base to stay out of the double play. I mean, he takes off, and he is knowing that he's got to get down there and keep the inning alive with a runner on. And Winning run at home plate. Or go ahead run at home plate. And Jordan Alvarez. Alvarez 0 for 1 with a walk. Alvarez back to Strasburg. Lead runner is cut down, and a good heads-up play by Rendon. It goes 1-5-6 with Turner on the bag, and that keeps the tying run out of scoring position. Strasburg, good athlete. More than likely, that would have been two if he came up with it. batter Correa as Daniel Hudson the right-hander is up now that the inning is past Alvarez Corbin just standing and watching in the bullpen Correa breaking ball for strike one it's been a similar game for Strasburg that he had on the road in, in Los Angeles in the winner take all game in that series he held the team in there and then the team rewarded him late with a rally and I'm telling you the pitch counts fine and you can get another inning out of Strasburg if he can get seven innings out of Strasburg I am sure Dave Martinez would love to shorten the game for his bullpen runner at first two out a strike hits the outside corner nothing and two on Correa who's over two there is nothing wrong with his stuff matter of fact I think it's getting better ten hits this entire postseason from Correa Three of them have left the park, and that breaking ball stays inside. He's three for 21 in this World Series with his two-run home run that came in Game 5. Strikeout ends the inning, and that's number six on the night for Strasburg. And after six in game six, Nationals up one. Back to work. Jan Gomes first up, breaking ball, strike one. strike well with each inning obviously from this point on this game has been filled with tension pressure and to be honest Houston knows they have and can afford a loss but they are playing this game they don't want to even entertain a game seven you've got the Astros that are trying to end it tonight and they'll do anything they can to make that happen and then with the presence of Scherzer 
out in the Nationals bullpen. That lets you know that it's obvious, but they'll even pitch Max Scherzer in this game to try to force a game seven tomorrow night. They have Anibal Sanchez on normal rest if they want to go that way. Whatever it takes. And now Scherzer starts to loosen up. Kenny? So I specifically asked Dave Martinez in his pregame news conference if Scherzer was available tonight. Was there any scenario in which he could pitch? He said, no, I feel that will be pushing it. Like I said, he threw flat ground today after not being able to move his neck or trap for two days. All that said, managers' comments before World Series games, they all come with an asterisk. And the asterisk is denoted by the words subject to change. I mean, he was hurting so bad the morning of game five two days ago that he said he couldn't even dress himself. I'm not surprised that he's feeling better, but I'm surprised that Scherzer would pitch in this situation. Mainly because if the game is short enough, here's one into right and a base hit by Gomes to start the seventh. If the game is short enough, you have your your two best relievers available, and then you have a warrior available for game seven on full rest and another day that he gets to heal up. The other side of that argument is, well, he's feeling good today. Who knows how he's going to feel tomorrow, tomorrow when he wakes up, and if today's a good day, go get him. Brent Strom is out to talk to Peacock after that leadoff hit by Jones with the top of the order coming up. Bud Light found a new hero in game five when Jeff Adams managed to get the home run ball while holding his two beers. So Bud Light brought him here to Houston to cheer on his team for game six. Shirts merchandising this. You may never know when your moment comes. He protected his blood lights, took one off the chest, <laughs> and got the ball. And now has a t-shirt line in honor of. We have the Todd Frazier thumbs down guy. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'll get the thumbs up guy. Or the two beers guy. Gomes was Almost walking away when Peacock threw over. And Gomes is back. Well, now the top of the order gets a chance to try to add to this lead. Trey Turner is one for three. An infield hit and run scored back in the first. Hey. Left-handed hitter and Adam Eaton on deck. Left-handed hitter and Juan Soto lurking. And remember, this is... And Astros pitching staff that does not have a left-hander on its active roster. That's a tough play for Peacock. And safe at first, Paul gets away, and the runners will advance to second and third. And now they're going to call the runner out for being inside the line. And in the way of the throw, and we're going to get an argument now is... Dave Martinez is furious. Sam Holbrook, and now the crowd is realizing this. Sam Holbrook has called the batter out for interfering with the throw. Take another look. You can run in this spot. You have to veer back towards the bag. And that is that is a tough call. He was inside the bag all the way to the end. But I mean he's right on it. And it, we've we've seen this time after time, regular season, postseason. And Turner is called out. It sends Gomes back to first. I mean, this is a 
I mean, potentially a series changing call. Right down the line, that runner's lane is to the outside of that first base foul line. Dave Martinez is saying he watched when you go back because it looked like a pretty direct route by Trey Turner, but he's called out. Nationals are hot. We'll take a break. Pitching change with Will Harris coming in. Checking in with New York, and this replay review is powered by Mitel. Tom Verducci is with us down at the field level. Tom, what are you hearing down there? Yeah, this is all about impeding the fielder's ability to catch the ball. It doesn't matter if the throw takes him into the runner. Did the runner impede the fielder's ability to catch the ball? Now, I think Davey Martinez's argument is that Trey Turner, by rule, is allowed to be inside the line for his last step. Think about it. Even if you're in that running lane, you have to come back towards the bag to literally touch the base. And the runner does have a right to the base on that last step. It's all about the timing, the way the umpires see it. As Drupal Cabrera is trying to calm Trey Turner down, as he has been called out by the home plate umpire. Meanwhile, the sun firing crew and the crew chief is Gary Cedarstrom. And the man who made the call, Sam Holbrook, the home plate umpire over there talking to New York. And as this ball trickled away, I mean, we were looking at nobody out, runners at second and third. Instead, at the moment, it's a runner at first, Gomes one out as they continue to talk to New York. And they are right there at the end of the Nationals bench hearing it from the Washington players. This rule of all the rules in baseball is probably the most controversial and probably one of the hardest ones to decipher or try to explain to the viewer at home because the way the base is centered over the middle of the chalk line you're supposed to be on the other side technically running but as long as you get back and that was as close as you can get back to right that was at the last minute I mean, he went down the dirt pretty much the entire way as opposed to far enough inside to hit grass he might have touched a couple of blades of grass but for the most part that was a direct route to the bag by Trey Turner. So watch, he's on the other side of the line the, pretty much the whole way. And so that's the visual the umpire is looking at. And then right about now, he gets to the middle of the bag. Don't know what else he can do, but we're taught as pitchers and fielders that when you have the throw, throw it at the runner because you might get that call if the first baseman They're still talking to New York. The crowd doesn't have any idea what's going on. Hey, he's right there! Just ask him! That's why the crowd is reacting that way for the delay. Meanwhile, Will Harris has come into the game, and we're waiting for whatever decision is made by... The umpires here and those back in New York. You can see what Trey Turner's saying. Joe Torrey is right here. Just ask him. The umpire back in New York is Alan Porter. This delay has a stadium full of people wondering what in the world's going on. Will Harris is going to have to take a few more throws. Just standing around in the middle of the diamond. So it's either going to be runner at first. And one out. Or conceivably. Second and third. Second and third. Nobody out. In a one-run ball game in game six of the World Series. And that's what's hanging in the balance right now. And now 
now they make an announcement here to the crowd to try and explain what's happening. Nobody's more interested than the man on the left, Mike Rizzo, the GM. But, you know, this delay... play was made because Turner's speed is so great. And they're going to stick with the call. Wait, Turner can't believe it. And like you said, he's going down the line. His last steps, I may have overstated earlier with regard to him being on the grass, but for the most part, I mean, you see runners way more inside the line than this. He's on the grass with his left foot here, but as he goes to the bag, he's right down the center of the bag. And he's, by the way, arriving at the same time as the baseball. Yeah, a right-handed first baseman has a harder time making that play than a left-handed first baseman. And so it's Gomes at first one out, and Eaton pops it up. Bregman out to get it, one pitch. Two out as Will Harris gets the second out here in the top of the seventh. Well, you can imagine the frustration for the Nationals, even though they've got the lead. Coming off of game five, they didn't play very well. A couple calls didn't go so called their way. And so they're already amped up. They're back three games to two with a one run lead. But that play would have changed the entire possible outcome of runners on second and third and their chances of scoring would have been <laughs> pretty darn good. Batter is run down. Who takes a ball. The back end of that call, if interference is called, the ball is dead. And if the batter is out, the runner goes back to the base that he occupied when the ball was pitched which is why Gomes was put back at first base. He was there with one out, now there with two out. And Rendon shoots one in the left. Back at the wall, it is gone! Anthony Rendon! And the lead is three here in the seventh inning for the Nationals, it's 5-2 as Rendon may have just rescued this inning for Washington. Well, all that frustration just left that dugout in an unbelievable burst of tears from that ball. Left the field. And Turner, who was called out on that play, celebrates Dave Martinez. You see his frustration. And the lead is three. Biggest lead of the night. And the batter is Soto. Hard hit right at Guriel. Can't hit it any harder. Rendon with a two out, two run shot. Mike Grizzo is pumped up. Trey Turner is pumped up. And the Nationals, as it's time to stretch, lead game six, five to two back to the mound. There's a lot going on here. We'll try to decipher and get through what happened in the top of this inning because it's confusing really to everybody here. This is between innings. And Dave Martinez went out and then this escalated 
where Chip Hale had to hold his manager back. Davey Martinez has been through a heart procedure in the second half of the season. They're trying to get him to take it easy. Then he's thrown out of the ball game. And so Chip Hale will take over. Meanwhile, that play, we were all kind of shocked to see them go down and put the headset on because that play is not reviewable. They call it first base with the runner inside the line interfering with the throw. But they went down and then we had that long delay of over four minutes. Washington tried to protest the game. I know Ken Rosenthal is on the story down there. What did you learn, Ken? That's right, Joe. The Nationals are protesting the game, saying the rule regarding the runner's lane was misapplied. Now, the headset communication was for the umpires to inform replay in New York that the Nationals wanted to protest. Then the replay official read the rule in question back to the umpires. Right. But that was a rather lengthy delay for that. Umpire judgments, including interference, obstruction, are not reviewable. But we had that delay, and then we saw what transpired during the break. As Dave Martinez went out and got into the argument with the two umpires, and he's been ejected. Here's strike three called on Torinos as Strasburg just powers on and gets strikeout number seven. Tom Verducci. Yeah, hey, uh, just to follow up on that, the protest the Nationals wanted to lodge was disallowed because by rule you are not allowed to protest a judgment call. In this case, the umpire said it was a judgment call. Did Trey Turner interfere with the first baseman's ability to make the play before his last step at the base? In their judgment, the answer was yes. So according to Joe Torre, the time on the headset is about figuring out whether it was a rules infraction or not, and they determined it was not. 5-2 is the score as Reddick takes a strike. Meanwhile, Strasburg, who gave up two runs in the first inning, has allowed none since. He's allowed five hits, struck out seven, walked two, and he's doing typical Steven Strasburg type thing. He is. He's locked in. His pitches are crisp. And he's got an opportunity to get through the seventh inning, which would be huge. Reddick hits it in the air to center. Back is Robles for out number two. Tell you what, Dave Martinez, about as angry as you're going to get in a situation you just hope doesn't affect him with what he's been through. So his, his blood pressure shot up, his heart rate shot up. They try to monitor that so much so that they prefer him seated while he's managing ball games. The home run took a little bit of that edge off by that man Rendon. Meanwhile, the other end of all of this is Max Scherzer has taken a seat out in the bullpen. Yeah, and, and the good news, as frustrated as many people who are watching this game trying to figure out why that rule is the way it is, it's no different than maybe other sports have those little intangible rules like pass interference in football. It didn't end the inning, and the Nationals had a chance to still do something, and they did something. They hit a huge two-out home run. So as frustrating as that inning could have been, they salvaged it. It wasn't the third out call. It wasn't the third strike to end an inning. And so credit the Nationals and certainly Rendon for coming up huge. And that could have been a huge momentum swing the other way. And he hit it off Will Harris as Springer takes a strike two and one. And Will Harris was appearing for the 11th time this postseason and had yet to give up a run. 
Well, again, that delay of him standing out there. Normally, a reliever comes in, he's ready to go, his juices are flowing. He had to stand out there for those five or so minutes, throw in between. Who knows how that affected him? The count's gone to three and one. On deck is El Tuve. We're only in the seventh. And a 5-2 Nationals lead. And there are the numbers since that two-run first. By the way, Dave Martinez is the first manager ejected in a World Series game since Bobby Cox. Back in 96, game six. Here's a fly ball into right. Strasburg, what a job tonight as he has a one, two, three, seventh inning, eighth inning, crazy night. Game six, 5 2 National. Presented by YouTube TV on Fox. Eighth inning now, and Ryan Presley is the fourth pitcher of the night for the Astros. And he deals up and in to Howie Kendrick. Here are the numbers this postseason for Presley. He worked a quick and easy ninth inning in game five two nights ago. And A.J. Hinch talked to us before the game, and he said it kind of feels like Presley's back. Remember, he's been through arthroscopic right knee surgery. That happened in early August. He's worked his way back, but hasn't looked totally comfortable had some scar tissue dislodged back in game six of the ALCS and he's out there trying to keep this a three run ball game that's a strike two and one on Kendrick Whew, what a game Nationals fight for their lives Strasburg looks like he might go another inning The road team has never won six games in a postseason series in any of the three major sports that play postseason series. Obviously, football is the other quote unquote major sport. They don't play series, but MLB, the NBA, the NHL. Here's one to third. Bregman stays down on, gets the out. And it would have happened if the Nationals win this game. The road team will have won each of the first six games. And it's never happened any six games. And wins by the road team. And those two are talking it over, trying to shield their mouths. And what a difference the home and road makes That's for the uh, Nationals. Unbelievable. Wow. Here's Cabrera. Oh, that's inside. Ball one inside. This is the 115th World Series, and this is only the third time that the road team has won each of the first five games. 96 and 1906 and now a swing and a miss one ball one strike on Cabrera Cubs White Sox Braves Yankees and now Astros Nationals Here's a 1-1 pitch coming from Presley with one out outside two and one Chris Devensky getting loose One pitch outside, three balls and a strike with Zimmerman to follow. I'm just telling you from a team sport standpoint, you have no idea what it's like to go through these games on a fourth time in the postseason. Three one. 
That's a strike three and two. Four times you're playing for your basic playoff life, and you've been down in two of those games in basically a winner take all by three. Nationals were down in the wild card game by two in the bottom of the eighth at home. Came back to beat Milwaukee. They're down in the division series and won back to back games over the Dodgers. And down in this World Series, three games to two. They lead here tonight, five to two in the eighth inning with two outs in the top half. And the 4D replay is sponsored by T Mobile. And here's the two run shot off the back of Anthony Rendon with two out last inning. Raising some of the frustration on that call made against Trey Turner and the Nationals for the first out of the inning. Strike one on Zimmerman. And let's not forget. The job that Strasburg did with runners on second and third and Altuve up. And he got out of that inning with one out. Struck Altuve out in the ground ball by Brant. <laughs> Presley's stuff may indeed be back as the count goes to 0-2. Crowd trying to get back into it. Bottom of the eighth with the big bats coming up for the Astros down by three. He can do two. He carried the bat with him after his home run in the fifth. Then the controversial call as Turner was called out. Rendon saved the inning and saved maybe a lot with that two run shot with two out in the top of the seventh to make it 5 2. And Jose Altuve is first up. Against Steven Strasburg, who is turning in a performance of a lifetime for him. What he a is, night. He has answered every question and delivered every ability of what a monster this guy can be on the mound. Breaking ball for a strike to Altuve. Two runs in the first inning and nothing since. This year, he's had career highs in just about everything. He stayed healthy. He's been unbeatable in the postseason. And like you said, after that first inning, shocker of two, he gave up. Nothing since. That is not easy to do on the road when you don't have any room for error. He's only allowed three hits since the first inning. Two walks. He has struck out seven on the night. And the count one and one on Altuve, who was up. In a one-run game back in the fifth, runners at second and third, one out, and he struck out. The fifth strikeout of the night then for Strasburg, his biggest. Here's one to third, Rendon, to play. He got him. What a play by Rendon. And that's out number one. We'll see if the Astros want to take another look at it. We'll take another look at it for you. The way that he throws the sidearm makes this an unreal throw. Zimmerman gets off the bag. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We've had a bunch of soft hit bang bang plays. Rendon, the two run homer, and now the great defensive play. And the Astros will not ask. For a review. What a play by Rendon. From Houston, went to high school here, went to college here, a Rice Owl. Fantastic big league ball player and about to walk into free agency. Ground ball by Brantley to Cabrera. Two out. What a night for Strasburg as we look back at some of the deliveries he's made here in game six. Three incredibly tough pitches to hit. Fastball. Then he's got the changeup. 
He can tell you these three pitches are coming because when he throws them well, it's tough to hit. Take a look from your living room what you're going to be seeing if you try to hit one of these pitches. You got to make up your mind which way are they going, which one of them has the velocity change, and you see the three. From 82 to 87 to 94. With two out, nobody on. Here's Bregman, who has an infield hit and a home run. This one off the end of the bat. Strasburg has taken his team through eight. What a night for the 31-year-old right-hander, Stephen Strasburg. Ninth inning now, game six. Nationals bat up three. New pitcher for Houston. Verlander, Peacock, Harris, Presley, Davinsky. Robles takes a strike. We always talk about who's coming up. Well, it's the heart of the order. The two, three, and four hitters for the Nationals tonight have all homered. Typically, you think three, four, five. The four, five, six, but when you add Adam Eaton in, and there they are sitting together yet again, they have done big damage here tonight. One out here tonight. Want more postseason stats? Hey Siri, who's leading baseball in home runs in the postseason? To follow up on that point, the two, three, four hitters in the order of all homers. It's the second time in a game in World Series history that's happened. The only other time in 1952, the Brooklyn Dodgers in game one against the Yankees win. Pee Wee Reese, Duke Snyder, Jackie Robinson all went deep. That's out of play off to the right. And a strike on Jan Gomes. His hit started what turned out to be a messy seventh inning with a call at first base a judgment call by the home plate umpire a long delay with umpires talking on headsets on a play that wasn't reviewable and then trying to clarify that and then after Will Harris came in one pitch got Adam Eaton on a pop up the Batman Anthony Rendon hit one out to left to make it 5-2, and that's where it sits now here in the ninth. And like I said, it's a tough game. It's a tough game behind the plate. Tough game when you're umpiring things live. But nothing cost anybody anything, right? It's not like, even though there's been some tough calls, Washington, you've got to give them credit, as angry as they were, to get those two runs in that inning. Because that could have been something to be talked about for so long. It'll be talked about in the offseason, I know. They're always trying to figure out that rule and how to best articulate it, explain it. The 0 2 pitch here is down. And like we say, whenever that rule comes into play, I mean, obviously, shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Trey Turner went a straight line down the first baseline. And that last step for the bag is when the ball arrived and he was called out because Guriel, by the umpire's judgment, was not allowed to catch that throw, which then set off an argument. Eventually, Dave D. Martinez has been ejected. Here's a 2 2 pitch. It's down. A full count now with. One out here in the ninth. Meanwhile, Steven Strasburg only threw five pitches in the bottom of the eighth inning and may very well go back out there and try to finish this. Good pitch by Davinsky and a strikeout for out number two. T-Mobile takes fans further for the future of baseball. And now let's look at the best of the 4D replays sponsored by T-Mobile. There's the play. 
at first base. Turner called out. Trey Turner at the plate. Breaking ball from Davinsky. He was only activated for this World Series and on the roster for the Astros. He's thrown well. Turner tonight, an infield single, scored on the hit by Rendon. One ball, one strike. A little uncharacteristically by the Astros, and a guy who's had a lot of pitches in the game, they let Strasburg off the hook with five pitches. What you just said, and that was now maybe even getting a chance to go back out there for the night. At that point, hitter to hitter. Oh, that's up. That's outside, two and one. Meanwhile, as we've told you tonight, Max Scherzer through today was warming up in the bullpen earlier when this was a one run game. Likely to get the ball tomorrow, provided he feels well, having those spasms in his upper back, neck. Got a shot. He obviously hit the right spot with that shot because he was out throwing today and then was at one point getting ready to come into this game. Zach Granke, the scheduled starter for Houston if there's a game seven. And the count's still two and two on Trey Turner. Yeah, if there's a game seven, AJ will have the luxury of Rafiti to Possibly an inning out of Cole. I'm sure Cole will be begging to get in the game at some point. Meanwhile, a 2 2. That is fair. Into right. Turner will dig for two. Reddick gets it back in. It's a two out double by Trey Turner. And the batter will be Adam Eaton. All teams use iPads across MLB, analyzing scouting reports, stats, aiding their in-game decisions. Moments ago, that was Eaton after the pitching change, looking at Davinsky, and now he gets to face him. Pay attention to what he's done tonight, as you see, sack, bunt, home run with a walk in between. As far as players in a World Series game, it had been done 13 times total in 665 World Series games coming into this World Series. A player with a sacrifice bunt and a home run in the same ball game. I'm out. And Eaton hit by the pitch. He's done it twice in this World Series. Also did it back in game two, and now he's on limping to first, hit by the pitch. So I'm going to go on a small limb here and say he's the first player to ever have a sacrifice, but a homer and hit by pitch. What do you think? I like where you're going with that. <laughs> it would have had to have been over one of those previous 13 times total in 665 World Series games coming into this 2019 World Series and he's done it in game two and again here in game six a sack and a home run in the same game Brett Strom out to talk and Anthony Rendon could finish off a big night at the plate and he could do offensively what Steven Strasburg has done pitching wise for his team and trying to force a game seven right now a quick word from MasterCard Breaking the action? Yep. It's fast when I tap and go with my MasterCard. Priceless. Now, back to the game. Rendon has an RBI single, a walk, a two-run home run. He made a couple of really good plays at third in this game alone. Fastball misses at 96, ball one. Rendon hits it into deep right, back at the wall, it is off the wall. Two more runs 
Orange are going to score one a night for Anthony Rendon. Nationals have blown it open as they lead 7-2 to two here in the ninth. It's a five RBI game for the Houston native. And you'd never know it by Rendon's reactions. He's just one of those cool, calm, laid back players, but he's not laid back at the plate. He has been huge in this game, struggling a little part of the series. But again, you wouldn't know if he's 0 for 20 or 10 for 20. Here's Juan Soto, who hit a tape measure home run to give the Nationals a lead in the fifth, and they really haven't looked back since. He made it 3-2 with that shot off Verlander. 0-1. The opposite way at Brantley. Game six has just opened up. 7-2, Nationals on top. Try to force a game seven tomorrow. Scheduled starters are Max Scherzer and Zach Greinke. What a night this is. What a series this is. And for the first time, it looks like the road team will win six games in a postseason series. Yeah, I thought before this series started, we'd see a little two to one game, one to nothing, three to two. Well, we haven't seen that, but we've seen some great action and some great individual pitching performances. Of course, Cole. In game five, now Scherzer in game six. Here's Yuli Gurriel dealing with Strasburg. Strasburg, excuse me, game six. Scherzer might be the story in game seven. Johnny Cueto, the last one to go a full nine, game two of 2015. Strasburg hand for the out. What a play by Esdrubal Cabrera. He's played nearly flawless defense since the Nationals got him. Has not committed an error, and that was about as good as you can do it. Yeah, Strasburg deflected it, and again, this is like the third or fourth bare hand play we've seen. And that looks like that might be the end for Strasburg and I guarantee you his teammates are going to be static. That's it for Strasburg. What a night for big number 37 when they needed him the most. Well, he's never been better. Home and win cash prizes. Max Scherzer, Zach Greinke. With one out, nobody on. Jordan Alvarez takes a strike from Sean Doolittle. Eight and a third for Strasburg. Two runs, five hits. Two walks, seven strikeouts. A wild pitch thrown and a home run allowed. This will get Doolittle in the game, possibly even Hudson. Dust off the little cobwebs, get ready for game seven. Alvarez 0 for 2 with a walk. In the air to left center field, and Soto over to grab it. Two down. And the hugs continue down in the dugout for the Nationals. Well, that's going to be the biggest and longest and most important hug of the year. I mean, could he have been better no. with the stage? And the stakes any higher? No. No, he, he absolutely delivered in the moment. This is a great offense he had to face. 
They're really two great offenses. They're stingy. They make great pitchers look a little mortal. Hard to get the third strike on guys. Here's ball one to Correa. And I thought the best thing he did was not abandon his fastball when that fastball got hit a couple times. And he was in control the entire time of his emotions and his stuff. And it actually got better in the sixth, seventh, and eighth. Correa hits one in the left. This one is off the top of the wall. And Correa's got a two-out double. That just stayed in the park. And let's take a look. It is wow, just at the bottom of the line. Yeah, just a little tiny ledge there, and it hits the yellow line in the ledge. Just a tiny. Can't really see it on the TV. It's got to clear that yellow line. Well, just another possible game seven. 16, 17, 17. Here's Chirinos. Seven to two ball game, ninth inning, two out. Ball one upstairs at 93 from Doolittle. Serenos 0 for 3 tonight. There's a strike. Strasburg pitching into the ninth inning. Three home runs in this game for the Nationals. Eaton, Rendon, Soto. And the big third baseman for the Nationals with a five RBI night. To pace his club. And try and force a game seven tomorrow night in his hometown of Houston, Texas. Two one. Three balls and a strike with a lead Ms. Diaz on deck. The last three World Series have been clinched on the road. The Astros worked really hard to get the best record in baseball to have a game seven played here at home. That's a strike. And it's a full count. The force game seven. Rendon, a big game with a bat, and finally a smile. And Steven Strasburg, the big night on the mound, getting into the ninth inning. The road team has won each of the first six games. Steven Strasburg is now five and zero. Oh. This postseason, and unless he pitches tomorrow night in game seven and gets a decision, which is highly unlikely, he would be the only pitcher 
in postseason history to go 5-0 and in the same postseason. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, this journey for the Nationals, it's not over, but it's been incredible. Their manager believed in them. They believe in themselves. They got a chance to do something pretty special. Game sevens, you never know. Somebody you don't expect.